so at the beginning of this year, um, I, I made a short film, um, that I had been working on for a while, or, like, preparing for a while, since sometime last year, um, and, uh, just last, this last October, or just in October, uh, I finished pretty much everything with it, pretty much, um, and what I mean by that is that, um, I submitted it to all the festivals, and I heard back from all the festivals, and it was done playing at the one that it got, um, accepted into, um, which was a horrible experience, but, uh, yeah, that's over too. Um, and I uploaded it, um, on, online, and submitted it to all these groups online, and did all this really basic promotion stuff. So, uh, it's done. It's pretty much out of my hands, except for this, I guess. I mean, this is like,
listened to a lot was um, uh, was it uh, David Benioff, the writer, um, for doing the commentary for Spike Lee's The Twenty Fifth Hour. Um, you know, David. Ben I think I'm pretty sure David Benioff wrote the screenplay. Yeah, yeah, he's put. The that's why he was doing it. Sometimes, you know, they they have the authors do commentary for like adaptations, even if they didn't write the screenplay. But yeah. I'm sure David Benioff wrote it. Um, and, um, it just, he used to like calm me, because he was like, you know, real, real up close to the mic while he was speaking, and he wasn't whispering anything, he was just, he was doing a soft-spoken, you know, so it was like a feature-length soft-spoken. Um, and then another one was, uh, Annette Instorf. Um, I'm pretty sure she's a critic as well as uh, a personal assistant to uh, the filmmaker Krzysztof Kieslowski. Um, and I used to watch the commentary that she does for his film uh, Blue uh, from the Twakula trilogy. And that used to... I mean, it was really interesting staying up to listen to that. You know, I've, that's like one of my favorite commentaries. That's like one of the more insightful things that I've... I had in my life. I used to listen to that a lot in high school. Um, but it used to knock me out like crazy. Like, she has like such a nice, soft-spoken voice and just her accent. It's like this, she has this weird accent that's like, I think she said she, you know, she's, she was f from France. So she had, she came to the States. She came to like Brooklyn and developed like this Brooklyn accent over her French accent. And she, like, went, tried to learn French. I mean, I, she tried to, like, regain her French accent again, but it had this weird, I don't, I forgot, but it was, like, this weird French Brooklyn accent. Um, and then on top of that, she just, she just has a good voice. So, I used to put me to sleep. Commentaries used to really knock me out. Um, that was, like, my thing. I remember seriously having my headphones plugged into the TV. Uh being on the couch, like the cord can barely reach from the TV to the couch, and I would knock out like that. <sighs> Pretty sure there's some other ones, definitely some other ones. But anyhow, so I decided, or I was thinking, oh, I'd really like to do a commentary for my last film, but I'm not making a DVD of it, or I don't have any plans to right now. Um, and I didn't necessarily just want to upload uh, a commentary video. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why. I mean, it just feels weird having the standalone thing by itself. But I thought it would give it, um, it would give me more uh, reason or motivation to do it if uh, it was also as a whisper thing. Um, so that worked out real nice. And uh, yeah, so that's what I have today. I'm gonna be. Doing pretty much my my dream <clears throat> my dream like ideal thing like the whisper commentary I, you know seriously I'd, I wish I could have that I wish somebody would do whisper commentary for their films um, like I can imagine if like she wouldn't do this in a million years though I, but if Claire Denis did commentary for her films I don't know why Claire Denis I don't, I just, she has she has some weird mystique about her, and I, yeah, I just like her films, but anyhow, okay, so, here we go, this is the film that I made last, and, um, I'm, I'm thinking I might end up even doing another one for some other of my films, maybe my last one or something, I mean, the one before this, um, so, um, yeah, this will be good, it also, I mean, this is just good exposure, too, because, I would love to show all the people that watch these videos what else I do on the side, as long as I'm here, right? So, if I can get this to sync up properly, I'm just going to get this going right now. Here we go. So the name of the picture is Radioactive, and I'm going to try not to speak about how much I love all my actors and, and people who helped out and stuff and try to talk as much about just more interesting stuff than praise. So, um, okay, 
so this opening score is actually a piece that I wrote beforehand because I try to write music to, you know, inspire um, pictures in my head or to kind of like motivate certain things. Oh, shit, I realize I have to lower this. <laughs> so I realize that I have to write these sort of things. Um, I mean, I don't have to write these sort of things. I write music and it helps me picture things and also it's just good in general to have licensed music or music that's not under some copyright uh, that I can use and also it's just like even more um, ingrained in me and ingrained in the picture um, if it's my original score as well and I just that just works out for me big time um, and it's a lot of fun doing that so yeah I knew I'd use that. I was really excited. This opening shot, the way the whole thing started off, like this idea, it originated in high school, actually. I had this uh, image in my head of a girl falling back onto the bed with her boyfriend. And this whole really romantic, like, not necessarily sex scene, but, like, make-out scene um, that would, like, get really visually intense and stuff. And kind of stuck in my head uh, for a long time. The film is really close to what the original idea was as far as the plot goes for the first like moment, like the first few moments of the film, which is this scene. He drinks something that, you know, may, may or may not have been the reason of his death or the cause of his death. And uh, she, um, she freaks out, but that's about the extent of it. Otherwise, the rest of the film has been totally different, and I've totally uh, reworked that sort of vehicle um, for um, totally different concepts that um, that I that I just feel strongly about. So, um, this was another picture in my head. Actually, this is this one. The party happening in the background as he comes out. That stuff kind of just happening behind him. Everything kind of dying out. This is kind of like the end of the night, the end of something. Um, those are my friends back there. A lot of these people are my friends. What I really liked about shooting this film Seriously, like, this is my car with some, like, uh, really kind of, like, low-end car mount. Uh, I mean, it's a good car mount, but, you know, it's not like this big rig that we slapped to the front of the car, you know? And here we got on this, like, really long main street and just kind of drove together and we had, like, 
the cell phones on, like talking to each other back and forth. That was kind of an interesting way to shoot, to be directing somebody in another car. images in the film that kind of came out to be very, like, symbolic to me, that are very standout to me, that I, I didn't, you know, even consider until they were done and shot, and that was one of them, or looking at the thing. This here was something that I really had, though, like, this is so close to what I wanted for, uh, like, not so close, it is what I wanted, um, it's actually even better than what I wanted, um, when I was considering the scene, I knew it was seriously just gonna be sit or sitting here, like, drunk. Sitting in front of this TV in some motel room, and like I, I, I knew she'd be sitting there in front of it like that, but I didn't know it was going to be out of focus. I didn't know how it was going to light it. I didn't, you know, I didn't have everything exactly. But when I showed up, it was like it was what I wanted, and then some. It was like I, it, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It like transcended what I like thought of, and kind of just only gave me what I felt even though it, it objectively was this idea of girl sitting on bed, drunk, throwing up, motel, TV. This scene right here <coughs> was a scene that I went through a lot when I was auditioning. This was like one of the main things I used to audition them because it was like, you know, one of the only kind of big outbursts that she happens. Not, I mean, yeah, it's the only outburst, but it's one of the more uh, emotionally intense or physically representative of, you know, intense emotions, and, uh, I remember a lot of time, even when I was, like, when I was auditioning the guys for this scene, for this, for his role, I would play her, uh, that was a lot of fun, actually, I got really into that, um, so there's, like, a lot of videos out there of me just kind of, like, jumping on these dudes, like, just kind of wailing on them, you know, guys who can obviously kick my ass, too. this was the first thing that I auditioned a vet for, too. We met up, and I was like, look, you gotta, I gotta trust that you're gonna be able to, you know, totally not hold back on this, like, just hit, hit me, and for a moment, she was kind of, like, you know, pussying out, and just kind of standing back, but, I, but then, like, I grabbed her hands, and, like, you know, hit on me, and she, like, got it immediately, and she was, like, totally cool with it, and, like, from then on out, I think she kind of <laughs> understood that I didn't really, like, I 
it seemed like she didn't hold back. She says that she wishes she could have gave more on some scenes, but I don't know. I feel like she really, she brought it, and a lot of other people agree, so there's that. <laughs> that scene was rough, too. That was another one of the pictures in my head that came out the same way as that motel thing. <laughs>
this music too. This is actually from a track that I wrote a long time ago, and I've always wanted to use it in, the, in a film. This is actually only the last couple minutes of the track. It's like a ten minute song. Uh, but that worked out nice and fine. It worked out fantastic. I was super happy I finally got to use that. It's so perfectly. So yeah, that's, that's the film, and there's like a million and another one million and one other things that I could have said about that, but uh, that's about it. And I think 